conference, uh, what, whatever you want to ask. I've an, asked uh, uh, Senator Von Imhoff and Senator Don Levy to be here because they are members of finance and they are in the subcommittee process right now. And so if you have questions regarding subcommittee work, uh, they would probably be, be best to handle that. I'm also here, uh, or Senator Don Levy is also here on education questions. We've gotten a lot of questions on education recently. And uh, Senator uh, Hughes is in an education committee meeting, so she can't be here. So uh, Senator Don Levy, of course, experienced as a principal, a superintendent, and a school board president. <coughs> and you're the reason I asked Senator Don Levy here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Shauna just walked in the room. That's why I'm here. <laughs> That's, okay. Um, so I think we should be able to, to, to answer plenty of your questions. Keep in mind as we go forward, there's going to be some slight philosophical disagreements between uh, members of this body. <coughs> in general, the, the Senate is pretty well uh, synced up. Uh, we are on the same page regarding the need to reduce state spending to continue that. We've done very well over the past few years and we'll continue on that. Uh, we also realize there has to be some provision for a POMV of some kind. Again, there's some philosophical disagreements on that, but the general sense among the Senate is that we have to have a POMV, and uh, the spending cap is very important to us as well. There are other bills moving through the process. Sometimes they get overshadowed by something as large as uh, uh, the, the, the budget and the uh, dividend. Uh, that's to be expected. Uh, but. At this point, our focus is on the, the, the few things that matter most to Alaskans this year, and that is budget, spending cap, POMV. With that, I will entertain questions, because that's why we're here, so you can ask questions, not so we can talk. Becky. Becky Bourne, the Associated Press, for Senator Delaney, on the issue of the permanent fund. Last week in committee, you tried unsuccessfully to amend Senator Edmonds' bill to have an advisory vote. Um, can, you, can you talk us through where you're at in this process personally? Um, what kind of protections you think are necessary if we go with a POMB, or if you have any other conditions in mind that you think are necessary? Uh, thanks for the question. So, you know, as Senator Kelly said, we're, we're in agreement on 99.9% .9 of everything. I mean, we've talked about reducing the budget for years. Um, we're all on the same page on an appropriation limit, and later on, hopefully, we can talk about that and what what Colorado has done over the years uh, to um, to contain the growth of their government. Um, so we we do have some slight philosophical differences in the the approach in the permanent fund. Um, again, Senator Kelly and myself, we've agreed on um, the need to um, use the ERA for years. We've talked about that for years. Um, I um. I believe that there are certain things that we um, we partner with the people of Alaska. I mean, they sent us down here to do 99% of the, the business on our own. But there are some things that, um, you know, personally, I think the uh, people of Alaska should be involved in. And um, obviously, that that uh, amendment was was uh, one of them. I think it's important to um, be in constant communication with the people with regard to the permanent fund. Um, and so um, to that end, I was just speaking with uh, uh, Senator Von Imhoff and Senator Kelly uh, just a little while ago. We, we, we've had an approach. There's three bills now up in finance, and we will be also submitting a bill here this week that deals with the ERA and the PO, um, a POMV approach uh, going out. And so I, I think, you know, the more bills the people of Alaska have an opportunity to take a look at, and I do think having them in finance where you'll have four or five cameras as opposed to just in state affairs where you have one camera, is going to allow all of us to have a real robust discussion on how we want to move forward on the permanent fund and uh, the, the um, what happens with the PFD, what happens with the earnings reserve, et cetera. So, um, I'm you know me. I mean, like these folks here, I'm never afraid of a conversation and um, to um, to move something that one you know one thinks philosophically strongly about. But again, I think up in finance, we're going to be able to have a robust discussion. Um, I, you know, I do think the people of Alaska really need to be involved in this. They need to be watching this, uh, give them, give us their input, and um, I think what will come out of these discussions in finance, hopefully, is something that'll be um, uh, good for the people of Alaska and good for the state. Just a point of clarification: You said we'll submit a bill. Is that you? Yes. Other questions? Steve. I'm Steve Quinn with Bloomberg. Uh, well, we've heard over the last three or four years how government is too big every year. At what point do you folks think you'll know when government is the right size? Uh, 
That's a that's a really good question, and it's like it's like sanding a, a piece of furniture, and you start seeing the the veneer show up through the uh, th through the lacquer. Uh, it's it's something we're just going to have to play by ear. I don't think there's any question that government is is too big right now. It's difficult as we as we shrink back. There's no question about that either. Um, the previous group that was in here, the bipartisan working group, they ran government spending just in, in UG up at GUGF up to eight billion dollars. That that was huge. That was just a runaway spending spree. They have some things in there that that mitigated the cr mitigates the criticism I might level at them. They had to deal with PERS TERS. That was a big deal, uh, and that counted as as part of their spending. But <clears throat> the fact is, they they moved uh, spending to to levels that are just not sustainable. And we've been through the uh, going through the difficult task of, of reining that back. And as you cut back, there are going to be individual stories along the way where services that were needed weren't maybe met, where money was directed in areas that maybe it shouldn't have been. That's just all part of the adjustment factor, and it's going to take time. But it's our belief in the Senate, I, I think I speak for, for all of us, that you have to keep that, I was going to say 10 pounds of pressure uh, on the budget, but, but the, we need to keep maybe constantly 20 pounds of pressure on the budget to keep it moving in a downward direction. And then we'll just, we're just going to have to have a discussion at a certain point with the people of Alaska and among ourselves as to the level of government. Is it sustainable at this point or that point? Um, currently, enough people in this state believe like we do uh, we're spending too much S uh, and it, I was just I was just going to throw to Senator Senator Imhoff because I know you've got a you've got three in t tough sub subcommittees and maybe you could kind of riff on that a little bit well I think there's several different approaches to figure out really what is the right size and scope of our government and I think one of the approaches is what can we afford over the long term both in the good times and in the bad we also take a look at what some of our peers are doing. Uh, Senator Dunleavy mentioned the state of Colorado. Well, pretty much almost every state in the union has some type of spending cap mechanism. What are our peers doing? What makes sense for Alaska? We actually have a spending cap in the Constitution right now. Senate Bill 70 addresses that and resets the spending to $4.1 billion, as well as utilizes a um, not a population base, but a uh, Anchorage CPI um, what is it? Calculator. That makes sense. That's, looks, that's looking to see what of our, some of our peers are doing. In regards to the subcommittees, um, I'm in charge of Judiciary, um, DEC, and UA. Uh, we heard from Chief Justice Craig Stowers already on Judiciary, and he was very eloquent um, when he addressed both bodies in how that particular agency and department is using a myriad of myriad of a variety of approaches to help address the budget deficit in their own way. And we hope that um, other agencies are doing the same, and in fact, DEC is, and they came and presented at our subcommittee, and they came up with about six or seven different ideas that's uniquely situated for DEC that they're doing to help um, help do their fair share of addressing the budget deficit and decreasing the reliance on UGF. So I commend DEC and Judiciary and UA for that matter because uh, President Johnson is also doing the same thing with his strategic pathways. Senator Dunleavy. Just uh, briefly, Steve, um, this is nothing new. I mean, we, the, the state of Alaska struggled with the, the, the concept of what is the right size of government forever. Um, if, as you recall, back in the 70s, uh, the people of Alaska with their legislature, they put into place a whole number of breaks on the growth of government. Permanent fund was put into place. Constitutional budget reserve was put into place. The appropriation limit was put into place. Um, and later on, statutorily, the PFD was put into place to kind of tie the people to, of Alaska to the, the permanent fund. But nonetheless, they were doubling and tripling budgets in the 70s, uh, year after year for a period of time. And um, people back then didn't think it was sustainable. You're talking about a, a, a population of 700,000 people over a land mass the size of Western Europe uh, with very little infrastructure. So the question is, what do we want to be in the future? And um, the thing I would have folks really think about as we go forward is, when we were getting money out of the ground, and I'm going to use that term, and it wasn't coming out of our pockets directly, it may have been a different view of how that money should have been spent and how that money should have been saved. But now that we're on the verge of taking money out of your pocket, literally out of your pocket, we really have to ask ourselves, do we have a tax base 
that is sustainable. Do we have a tax base that won't, that are that f potential future tax policies, and I'm not, obviously I'm not a tax person for the, for the following reasons, are they going to, is our tax base going to disappear and move south? Um, it's a different ball game up here. It's, it's a harsher climate. It's, it's geographically, it's, it's isolated from the rest of the, the country. You have a lot of folks up here that have left their families, et cetera, et cetera. But as we start to look at how are we going to right size this government or how are we going to pay for this government, we have to be real careful that we're not chasing our tax base out of the state of Alaska. And I'll end with this. We just went through two years of that where we've had thousands and thousands of layoffs, especially in the oil patch, which are very good paying jobs. Many of those people are trying to figure out what they do next. Many of them have already left the state. That's part of the potential, quote, tax base that some people are looking at. Um, and others are still trying to figure out what they do if they want to stay in the state. So the point I'm trying to make is this. This is not a new question. Alaska's always struggled with this. We've put a whole bunch of different breaks in over the last several decades to try and slow the growth and spending of government down. And I would caution people as we look forward to what, what Alaska is going to look at like, it's not just, it's not very easy. It's not just that easy to go tax somebody to just to pay it, just tax. Um, I think there's going to be some serious consequences if we go down the tax road. Shauna? Yes, Shauna Condo, Alaska Education Update. Um, Friday, Senator Kelly, I asked him uh, how he felt about the House Finance Committee cutting school bond debt reimbursement, and uh, he seemed uh, pretty uh, non-amenable to that. Um, how do you guys feel ab about that? And um, he did say you guys are going to cut education. There aren't many other places to cut other than pupil transportation and the foundation formula. Where do you guys see cutting? Can, can I interject one thing on the uh, bond debt reimbursement? Uh, going forward, I think that's a fair fair debate to have. But if people have bonded, uh, understanding that the state was going to reimburse that, uh, it's just the same as tax credits. It's a debt we owe. We need to pay our bills. Uh, I just build off of what Senator Kelly said. Um, as a, I mean, you know my background is education and as a school board president, I'm at too. Um, if you, if you, if people go to the polls to vote on a bond because they believe that the state is going to be um, uh, reimbursing part of that, I think it's a serious question that we need to ask ourselves. Um, are we going to renege on that? And so you have municipalities, and this falls solely on the shoulders of municipalities, this, this move that the House did. Um, I'm, not sure if it is, um, I'm not sure if it's something that's going to stand in the Senate, but that needs to be a discussion for, for everybody in the Senate. Sure. But I, I do think that it's, um, I do think it's problematic when you um, tell folks, go to the polls, vote on a bond, help build your local schools, and oh yeah, we're not going to uh, uphold our end of the bargain at the state level. I think it's a problem. Senator Von Amhoff. <clears throat> yes, <clears throat> Senator Hoffman has indicated that we are looking at a 5% reduction uh, across the board, particularly in the large uh, items such as health and social services, education, and UA. Um, so that is on the record, and we are looking for reductions. In the event that we ultimately look at the formula for some type of reductions, I know that Senator Hughes is looking at um, a provision in a bill to help increase the fund balance, which right now is at 10 percent, to perhaps increase it to a ceiling of 25 percent. So districts and agencies that see efficiencies can actually keep more money from one year to the next to help accommodate them in this budget reduction environment. Hmm. Just, can I just add one more thing? Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Um, education, like a lot of other um, entities, they're getting pounded by health care costs that are escalating. But that's, it's true across the country. It's true in all the states. And that's something that uh, we looked at a few years ago, but I think we'll be looking at that more going into the future as to how we can structurally help school districts manage that